Borders Bookstores was one of the many companies unable to recover from the economic recession of 2008-2009. As a result, about 8.8 .8 million jobs were lost in the economy. The true cost of this can be seen in either personal or individual struggles, and on a more macro level, the loss of production in the entire economy. The total adult working age population in 2016 was 261.1 million people. Out of this pop total population, 158.2 million were classified as employed and 7.75 million were classified as unemployed. The remaining 9.1 million were classified as out of the labor force. As you will learn, however, this seemingly simple chart does not tell the whole story because the labor force consists of those individuals actively looking for employment. If you have stopped looking for employment, you are only part or, or only part time, you will not be considered unemployed. The U.S. unemployment rate moves up and down as the economy moves in and out of recessions. These are short-term cyclical changes in the unemployment rate. But over time, the unemployment rate seems to return to a range of 4% to 6%. There does not seem to be a long-term trend toward the, toward the rate moving generally higher or generally lower. The next three slides show us the impact of that unemployment shows, shows us that the impact of unemployment is not the same for all. Depending on your gender, age, race, and ethnicity, you may experience a higher or lower unemployment rate. In this graph, we see that gender, uh, through eight, from 1972 to 2012, the unemployment rates for men used to be lower than unemployment rates for women. But in recent decades, the two rates have been very close, often with the unemployment rate for men being somewhat higher. By, a, uh, by age, this, one's, this chart is by age. In 1972 to 2012, unemployment rates are highest for the very young and become lower with age. Now, now for race and ethnicity. From uh, 1972 to 2012, although the unemployment rates for all groups tend to rise and fall together, the unemployment rate for whites have been lower than the unemployment rates for blacks and Hispanics in recent decades. In a labor market with fixed wages, the equilibrium will occur at wage WE or equilibrium wage and quantity QE or equilibrium quantity of labor where the number of people looking for jobs shown by S in this graph equals the number of jobs available, shown by D. The various situations listed on the left cause the wa wage rate to become sticky, or in other words, the, wage, uh, the market rate tends to not adjust to changes in supply or demand. Uh, to illustrate, let's look at the graph on the right. Because the wage rate is stuck at W, above the equilibrium, the number of job seekers QS is greater than the number of job openings QD. The result is unemployment shown by the bracket in the figure. In a labor market, as depicted by the graph on the left, where wages are able to rise, an increase in the demand for labor from DO to D1 leads to an increase in equilibrium quantity for labor hired from QO to Q1 and a rise in equilibrium rage from WO to W1. In a labor market, as depicted by the graph on the right, uh, where wages do not decline, a fall in demand for labor from DO to D1 leads to a decline in the quantity of labor demanded at the original wage, WO, from QO to Q2. These workers will want to work at the prevailing uh, wage, which is WO, but will not be able to find jobs. The natural rate of employment is the unemployment rate that would result from the combination of economic, social, and political factors that exist at the time, assuming that the economy is neither booming nor in recession. 
So this term is used to describe, the term natural rate of employment is used to describe the long run expectations of the labor market. In the short run, cyclical unemployment caused by recessions and expansions in the economy as it cycles up and down has an impact on the unemployment rate. But in the long run, natural rate of unemployment, there, there are only two main factors, frictional unemployment and structural unemployment. Frictional unemployment occurs as employees with marketable skills move from job to job. Structural unemployment is unemployment stemming from a mismatch in the needed skills in the labor market, the needed skills in the labor market, and the skills held by laborers. In this case, demand for their skills has shifted away, causing a need for retraining and uh, acquiring acquisition of new skills. Increases in productivity, productivity meaning uh, total goods produced divided by labor hours, are usually followed by an increase in average wages. Let's look at, at some examples that illustrate this and some issues that may arise in the expectations of workers and employers. In the graph on the left, productivity is rising, increasing the demand for labor. Employers and workers become used to the pattern of wage increases. Then productivity suddenly stops increasing. However, the expectations of employers and workers for wage increases do not shift immediately. So wages keep rising as before, but the demand for labor is not increased. So at wage W4, unemployment exists where the quantity supplied of labor exceeds the quantity demanded. In the graph on the right, the rate of, uh, the rate of productivity increase has been zero for a time. So employers and workers have come to accept the equilibrium wage level, W. Then productivity increases unexpectedly, shifting demand for labor from DO to D1. At the wage W, this means that the quantity demanded for labor exceeds the quantity supplied, and with job offers plentiful, the unemployment rate will be low.